we all have been hearing about uh, feeding nutrition about goat and sheep and uh, we have uh, we know so many things about the dry matter about the how much carbohydrate is required how much protein crude protein either extract all these things uh, we have been uh, hearing so many times but uh, we are forgetting about one important thing that is the uh, the rumen ecosystem or the rumen microbiome and that has recently come into uh, discussions now and most of the people are discussing on this because unless and until you maintain a perfect rumen ecosystem or the rumen microbiome whatever feed you feed how much money you spent on feeding the animal it's not going to reflect on the animal's production and my discussion will be all about ruminants and i am very sorry to say that sometimes about showing most of the slides most of the picture will be about uh, uh, cattle instead of sheep and goat whether it is cattle buffalo sheep and goat all are ruminants uh, the most important thing about ruminants is that they are designed to take uh, rough ages especially dry grass or green grass and then the most important thing is that these animals don't even have the enzymes to break the cell wall of the um, grass you know that the vegetable cell wall is made up of cellulose and these animals doesn't have the cellulose enzyme to break the cell wall and get the nutrients from inside the cell it is only the rumen microbes which can do this they only have the cellulase enzyme and then after breaking the cell wall only there are different uh, consortia of microorganism which can work out uh, or which can take out different nutrients from the vegetable plant fiber and then convert it into milk and meat uh, which are the best quality protein for human beings so you can see that the primary carbohydrates present in the feed cannot be utilized by the sheep and goat as it does not produce cellulase enzyme however the rumen bacteria and fungi degrades majority of the plant cell wall carbohydrates through cellulose and hemicellulose enzymes these enzyme break down the complex plant cell wall carbohydrates into monosaccharides that is used by other bacterial groups and they produce the volatile fatty acid the main source of energy for sheep and goat Rumen acts as an anaerobic microbial habitat for approximately 10 raised to 11 cells per ml of bacteria, 10 raised to 6 cells per ml of protozoa, 10 raised to 4 cells per ml of fungi, 10 raised to 6 cells per ml of methanogens, and 10 raised to 10 particles per ml of bacteriophages. The biome in the rumen can be divided into the the liquid phase making up to 25% of the microbial mass the solid phase making up to 70% of the microbial mass and the rumen epithelial cells and protozoa making up to 5% of the microbial mass so in short feeding of the rumen animals can be considered as feeding the rumen microbes so this is a very most important thing so nowadays uh, the practical shepherds who do shepherding uh, they are grazing 100% on grazing and uh, but those who have gone for commercial goat and sheep farming they uh, um, depend mainly on uh, feeds that has been already manufactured manufactured feed but what happens is that most of the time we find that the the commercial farmers instead of going for goat feeds they feed the cattle feed to the animals and i'll just uh, tell you the problems in that and then as we go further so one of the most important problem that is faced by these animals is subacute ruminal acidosis uh especially in kerala people feed these animals with large quantity of rice and rice gruels and uh, you know the animal has its own system of maintaining the uh, buffering capacity by the bicarbonate buffering system but even uh, out of that uh, uh, the main problem that is happening is that when you feed liquid feed to these ruminants the uh, first problem is that there is no chewing so uh, the saliva that is produced is very less so that buffering from the saliva is already gone second is that the animal face very much difficulty to regurgitate it this feed has to come back into the mouth for again mastication that is not happening so all these things lead to 
subacute renal acidosis. And here we can find a graph in which it shows that uh, if you start feeding uh, the concentrate feed alone in the morning, within six hours time, the rumen has gone into rumen acidosis. And after six hours, the body is trying to uh, buffer it by uh, activating the bicarbonate buffering system of the body. And by 12 hours time, it is normalized. But again, by that time, you again start feeding concentrate. And again, within six hours, it goes into Roman acidosis. So when this acidosis happen, we can see that there is poor appetite, depressed fibrous digestion, poor microbial growth. So all these things will be affecting the production and productivity of these animals. So in short, if you are feeding carbohydrates alone, or if you are feeding concentrate feed alone, definitely you are daily causing fluctuation in the Roman microbiome. That will definitely negatively affect the production and productivity of these animals. I mean, no doubt about that. So we, if we see acidosis, uh, subacute rumen acidosis, we can see four secondary complications. They are the rumen hyperparakeratosis, uh, mycotic ruminitis or ruminitis, then it becomes laminitis, then it leads to low milk fat syndrome. And if it is continuing for a long time, we'll see that the animal died due to liver abscess complex. So these are some of the symptoms uh, that is being de depicted, not from sheep and goat, but from cattle. You can see that the starting point is the laminitis, the hoof gets worn off, and there is uh, pain in the joints, and then the animal itself becomes emaciated. And all these are due to the excess carbohydrates alone, which is fed to these ruminants. And these days we find that there are there, there has been a lot of farmers who feed the animals with brewery waste. Definitely, initially it will be giving some good symptoms like increased body weight gain. But in course of time, we see that all these animals succumb to subacute ruminal acidosis and die due to liver abscess complex. So when there is ruminitis, you can see that the, the consistency of the dung is lost. And after some time, if it is regular, it leads to Roman hyperparakeratosis. So in this, what we find that the grains like maize are just going out through the dung without getting absorbed. So that is a, that means that the villae are all um, keratinized. So the absorption capacity is already lost. And then we find that uh, there is, uh, when the laminate is exceeds a threshold, we can see pink color coming around the dew close and then uh, mucus filled dung with uh, air bubbles. So these are the symptoms of acidosis, severe acidosis. So I'm here listing some of the commonly encountered problems faced by sheep and goat farmers. One is infantile genitalia, delayed ovulation, extended heat period, ab abortion, agalaxia, infantile mortality, indigestion, laminitis, mastitis. So if you see uh, these problems, these are some of the most important problems faced by commercial sheep and goat farmers nowadays. So we find that half of this, uh, all the problems affecting the reproductive system is mainly due to one cause, that is the uh, urea poisoning. And the second half, uh, from the uh, indigestion, laminitis, mastitis, all these things are due to subacute rumen acidosis. So I feel that, especially in, uh, I'm talking in terms of Kerala situation, the more 90 percent of the problems that we encounter in the field are due to two important problems. Uh, one is urea poisoning, and other is subacute rumen acidosis. So urea is the normal. So this happens when uh, the farmers adopt uh, cattle feed instead of goat feed. Uh, you know that uh, goat feed manufacturers are very less. So easy way of overcoming that is by feeding uh, the cattle feed, which is commercially available in all uh, shops. So urea is the normal end product of protein metabolism in mammals, which is eliminated from the body in the form of urine as waste. Ruminants does not possess enzyme of its own for the breakdown of urea and NPN compounds. This NPN compound should be used by the Roman bacteria for the synthesis of protein. And these bacteria are digested by the animal further in the digestive tract, that is the abomasum, to produce microbial protein for the synthesis of milk and meat. But hydrolysis of urea increases Roman ammonia and elevates the Roman pH. This leads to the depth of Roman microflora, 
which defeats the sole purpose of urea feeding. And the current recommendation is only 0.7 percent. But you, but we find that uh, most of the feeds, especially the cattle feed, we get uh, are having more than 1.5 percent urea in it. So feeding higher level of urea will cause lower feed intake, lower daily gains, poor feed conversion, low longer feed feeding period, and less profit. Again, one of the most important problems that we face is the type of urea that is being incorporated into the feed. Uh, in some of the Western countries where urea is still incorporated, they are using feed grade urea. But unfortunately, we still have the fertilizer grade of urea only. So if more urea is consumed, then the rumen organism can metabolize. The ammonia will be absorbed from the rumen wall into the blood. And as you know, that ammonia is toxic to animal tissue and the body will try to convert it back to urea in the liver and it is excreted by the kidney. And this pathway can easily be toppled when excess ammonia and urea circulates in the blood causing poisoning. We find that the kids and lambs below six months of age in which rumen is not developed should never be fed urea containing concentrates. Animals usually die when the blood ammonia level reaches five milligram per 100 milliliters of blood and the rumen pH will rise to eight that means it goes to alkaline side and normal functioning of the rumen will cease. Urea causes several reproductive problems like significantly smaller corpus luteum with less capacity to synthesize progesterone, leading to infertility and sometimes abortion. So to sum up, urea is not necessary in the diet of ruminant animal. It is fed as a protein replacement in ration to reduce the cost of high quality vegetable protein. Okay, so now we are coming to what is the solution for the all these problems. The only solution for this problem is making TMR, total mixed ration, and that too for sheep and goat, dry TMR. Again, uh, the main advantage of feeding dry or green TMR to goat is that uh, we are not changing the feed uh, daily. There is no alternation in the feed. It is the same feed that is being fed to the animal daily. That means the rumen ecosystem is well preferred. There is no change in micro microbes. There is no alternation in the uh, rumen medium. So that definitely is going to improve the production and no doubt about it. Another important topic which I want to discuss with you here is the, this is the last topic that is the dietary cation ion balance. So you know that the main cations uh, that is incorporated into the feed is the sodium and potassium and the main anions and the negative ions are the chlorine and the sulfur. So uh, we, if we work out the uh, dietary cation anion balance of the ruminants, the, uh, the rumen, the feed that is fed to the animal should be highly positive, highly cationic. So uh, in that one of the most important thing which we can use to uh, balance the dietary cation ion and also uh, which can be used as a buffer is the uh, animal feed grade soda by car. So we know that uh, the Tata company is manufacturing an animal feed grade sodium by car which is known as the Alka car. So in the diet, in the adult diet of sheep and goat, it has to be incorporated as a buffer. Again, we'll discuss some important things, how to increase the milk fat. So if you want to increase the milk fat, the most important thing are the digestible fibers. That is the neutral detergent fibers and the acid detergent fibers. The neutral detergent fibers should be 25 to 30% and the acid detergent fibers should be 20%. And then we have to feed feedstuffs, which is rich in fibers. Hay, both leguminous or non-leguminous, bran, wheat or rice bran, and chunnies like red, black, green and Bengal gram. Another important thing which can increase the milk fat is the coconut, uh, the copra or the peas from the Papillonaceae family. And we have also seen that another uh, in, uh, feed ingredients which can influence the milk fat is the cotton seed cake and also uh, the tamarind seed cake. Tapioca, if it is available, can be incorporated. And most of them, and another important additive, which we have to use in the ruminant feed is the yeast and the mineral mixture. So they are absorbed as such. So one of the most important thing affecting the milk fat is the quantity of the fibers and the minerals. So how to increase the SNF? This is another important topic, which is debated all around. So as I've already told, our sodium bicarbonate is one of the most important ingredient to increase the SNF of milk. 
so another important thing is about the watering so water should be available at all 24 hours and uh, we should not provide uh, water as as it is comfort comfortable for us it should be available 24 hours the animal should be able to take water ad libitum from the uh, stall itself and as you know to produce 1 liter of milk the blood has to pass through the udder uh, 500 liters of blood has to pass through the udder so uh, one of the most important thing limiting milk production in sheep and goat is anemia and that you know it is caused by parasites parasitic anemia is very common uh, which limits the production and productivity of sheep and goat so we so, so if we see schedule the 24 hours period we can see that it should take 5 hours for feeding and uh, 7 hours for ruminating half an hour for drinking and the animal has to lie down for a long time and then other management practice 1.5 hours so we have to uh, uh, schedule our 24 hour schedule like this so these are the important things that uh, I want to discuss with you. And now to end my presentation, I want to give some important practical points to the field veterinarians. So first and most important thing is that never give oral antibiotics to ruminants. So if you are giving oral antibiotics to ruminants, it is going to kill all the rumen microbes. And that is definitely going to affect the rumen microbial system. Even if you are doing antibiotic therapy, that is by parenteral antibiotic therapy by giving injections, after the, after the final injection, you have to advise cut transplantation. Cut transplantation is the transplantation of the cut from slaughterhouses, from sheep and goat, which is being slaughtered. We have to take the uh, rumen contents. Uh, we have to squeeze it in a cloth and then immediately uh, within one hour we have to feed that cut to the animal which has been given an antibiotic therapy and then another important thing is that the feed and water should not be mixed together and we have to always think of the roman ecosystem and feed buffers for the well-being of animal and if you're treating hoof problems laminitis or ruminitis always treat the underlying cause the subacute ruminal acidosis Try to provide free stall system and bedding material. Give opportunity for lying down and ruminating. And last but not the least, never advise monthly deworming. So this is one another important problem that we have we are seeing in the field field condition. So farmers themselves go to the medical shops and buy uh, analmindix and feed uh, the animals with uh, analmindix every month. So what it is causing is that if you have uh, deworming the animal monthly, every month, it is going to kill all the protozoa, Roman protozoa. So uh, we, have, we had found that the Roman bacteria, Roman microbiomes are mostly adhering to the protozoa. So if you are getting rid of all the protozoa, definitely the Roman microbes are also going to vanish. So these are the most important points that we have to keep in mind uh, when we deal with ruminants. For, because they have been created to convert the poor quality roughage into uh, good quality protein by utilizing it through the rumen microbiome and then digesting the rumen microbes for the production of protein. So we have to keep this in mind and with these words I conclude my topic. Thank you.